So students, last time we were discussing about uh, <clears throat> the flora and fauna in prairies, that is in USA and Canada. Today we are going to discuss about the people of prairies. Actually, people of prairies are very, very hardworking and, and they have uh, successfully harnessed technology to utilize their rich natural resources. Whatever natural resources they have with them, they have learned to utilize uh, them to their best. And two most developed countries of the world, that is US and Canada, are located in this region. Cultivation is done on scientific line. Lot of uh, machines or agricultural equipments are used for agriculture like tractors, harvester, tiller, harrows, combined harvesters, etc. And that use of technology has turned North America a surplus food producer. That's why this area of the world is also called granaries of the world or basket of bread because this area has huge surplus of wheat production. Many countries, many Latin American countries, African countries import food grains, especially wheat and uh, corn from prairies of the prairies of US and Canada. Dairy farming is another major industry. The dairy uh, wealth extends from Great Lakes to the Atlantic coast in the east. Great Lakes, I hope you remember the area of Great Lakes. You can see through the map. This is area of Great Lake. Okay, where is... Uh, just a minute. You see here, this is Atlantic Ocean, okay, and this is uh, eastern coast of uh, USA. These are Great Lakes, Superior, Irie, Michigan, Ontario, Huron, okay. So this area lies between this region, okay, from Great Lakes to eastern coast of America or western part of Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so this area extends over here. Shall you now come to the point? So, from Great Lakes to Atlantic Coast in the east and dairy farming and extensive agriculture both uh, promote setting up a food processing industries in this belt of the world. Large mineral deposits, particularly coal and iron, and a good network of roads, railways, canals in this region have made it the most industrialized region in the world. Actually, this region is the best industrialized region in the world. Important cities in the American prairies are Chicago, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, Kansas, Denver, and in the Canadian prairies, the important cities are Edmonton, then uh, Saskatoon, Calgary, and Winnipeg. Okay, these are important cities in this area. Okay. Next, we are going to discuss is the wells. Just opposite to the prairies, prairies are in northern hemisphere, and wells are in southern hemisphere. Okay. Whatever climatic conditions we are going to study, that will be just opposite to each other. You have to keep in mind. Actually, well name was given by the Dutch settlers before South Africa was colonized by the Britishers. Means before it was occupied by the Britishers, Dutch settlers give this name to this area that is the Welt. The temperate grasslands of South America, sorry, South Africa are called the Welts. And wells are rolling plateaus with varying height ranging from 600 meter to 1100 meter. Geographically, actually the area between 300 and 600 meter is known as a plateau. But here, this height of this plateau is 600 meter to 1100 meter. Actually, there are so many exceptions regarding different physiographic or physical features in the world. As far as a plateau is concerned, plateau has a flat top whatever it, its height may be. Think of the uh, Tibetan Plateau. Tibetan Plateau is 4000 meter, but it is plateau. And geographically, any area more than 600 meter 
with an apex is a hill and more than 900 meter with an apex or with a peak is called a mountain but Tibetan plateau is 4000 meter but still it is a plateau because it has a flat top okay you have to keep in mind it's bound by the Drakensberg mountains on the east to its west lies the Kalahari desert you can see over here in the map okay see this is Drakensberg okay so in the east it is uh, bounded by Drakensberg mountain and to its west lies the Kalahari desert on the northeast part high wells are located that attain a height of more than 1600 meter in some places okay so here this upper part or this part uh, is let me mark it over here so that you can easily understand it this part this part is known as upper wells okay and the rest is the lower wells it is also apart from lower wells it is also called I think uh, let me remind it's another name bush wells yes bush wells its lower wells as well as bush wells b u s h bush okay in some places uh, its height is above or more than 1600 meter look at the map of africa name the countries that uh, are covered by the wells that tributaries like river orange and limpopo limpopo is in the north and uh, orange is in the south this is limpopo river here is limpopo river and downward it is orange river i hope you can see over here it's limpopo why don't it write yes it's limpopo and this is orange river okay in the northern side it is bounded by limpopo river and southern side it is bounded by orange river now the climate the wells have a mild climate due to the influence of the Indian Ocean as you know uh, water takes more time and more energy to get heated and it's a bad conductor of it's a good conductor of heat but it's a bad radiator means it takes more time to get heated at the same time it takes a lot of time to release the heat received from the Sun so due to this feature this area experiences mild climate neither too hot nor too cold winters are cold and dry temperatures are between 5 degree and 10 degrees Celsius and July is the coldest month as I told you it is just opposite to prairies when there is a uh, summers in prairies it is uh, winter in wells and whenever there is a uh, winter in prairies it is summer in the wells summers are short and warm Johannesburg records about 20 degrees Celsius temperature in the summer so 20 degrees Celsius itself denotes the climatic conditions prevailing or found in that area the wells receive rainfall mainly in the summer months from November to February and this is mainly because of the warm ocean currents that wash the shores of wells if the rainfall is scanty in the winter months from June till August drought may occur and Kalahari desert is known for that you might have heard so many times Atacama Kalahari okay these are deserts and uh, whenever there is a drought condition occur in these area that uh, results in vast loss of life and property now flora and fauna the vegetation coverage is sparse scattered Grasses dominate the landscape. Red grass grows in bush wells. Bush wells means lower wells. In the high wells, acacia and uh, marula are seen to be growing. The animals of the wells are primarily lions, leopards, cheetah, and kudu. Mostly uh, animals belong to cat family. Okay. Now the people of this area. Wells are known for cattle rearing and mining. Keep in mind these are two major occupations of the people living in wells. Rearing, cattle rearing and mining. The soils are not very fertile in the wells due to the presence of discontinuous grasses exposing barren surface. However, where the land is fertile, crops are grown. Definitely it will be grown. 
द मेन क्रॉप्स आर मेज व्हीट बार्ले ओट्स एंड पोटैटोज कैश क्रॉप्स लाइक टोबैको सुगर केन एंड कॉटन आर ऑल्सो ग्रोन इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड शिप रेयरिंग इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ द पीपल माइंड इट इट इज पार्ट ऑफ कैटल रेयरिंग ओके शिप रेयरिंग इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ द पीपल शिप इज ब्रैड मेनली फॉर वूल एंड हैज गिवन राइज टू द वूल इंडस्ट्री इन द वर्ल्ड मेरीनो शिप इज अ इज अ पॉपुलर स्पीसीज एंड देयर वूल इज वेरी वार्म डेयरी फार्मिंग इज द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑक्यूपेशन ओके डेयरी फार्मिंग इज नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑक्यूपेशन कैटल आर रियर्ड इन द वार्मर एंड वेटर रीजन एंड आर एंड द डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक बटर चीज आर प्रोड्यूस्ड फॉर बोथ डोमेस्टिक सप्लाई एज वेल एज दे आर ऑल्सो एक्सपोर्टेड इन द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड द वेल्स हैव वेरी रिच रिजर्व ऑफ मिनरल्स आयरन एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्री हैज डिवेल्ड वे आर कोल एंड आयरन ओवर आयरन आर प्रजेंट Gold and diamond mining are major occupations of the people of this region. Gold and diamond. Johannesburg is known as the gold capital of the world, and Kimberley is famous for its diamond mines. Mining of diamond and gold in South Africa led to the establishment of trade ties with Britain, and gradually South Africa became a British colony. So this mineral. rich area has a well developed network of transport it's obvious wherever you have uh, mining or industries undoubtedly you will have to have well developed network of transportation be it roadways railways airways or waterways even pipelines are laid down in certain areas wherever the you can say liquids or gases are to be transported okay dear students so with this this chapter is over see you next time Good day bye bye